There is a type of problem in A-level physics that I think is most important for securing an A-star. Not only that, but getting those questions will make all the other questions feel easier. Yes, that is multi-step calculations. A problem similar to this appeared in one of the exams a year ago and had a really low success rate. Imagine that I give you a horizontal bar. Let's keep the number simple. So I'm gonna say that this has a mass of one kilograms and it's also one meter long. The mass will be uniformly distributed and let's support this with a couple of uh, springs with different spring constants. Spring one has a spring constant of spring constant of 10 newtons per meter. And let's support it on the other side with a different spring constant, let's call that spring two, with a force constant of 15 newtons per meter. I'm going to attach a mass somewhere along the length of the bar. Let's say that the mass has a mass of five kilograms and it's at a distance D away from one of the springs. My question is, what is this distance going to be if the bar is to remain horizontal? The key to this problem is realizing that whenever our system is balanced, the extension of spring one has to equal the extension of spring two. F is equal to kx, this is just Hooke's law. So if we were to rearrange that for the extension, we're going to get that the extension will be equal to the force on spring one divided by the first force constant. And this will have to be equal to F2 divide that by K2. And now suddenly we have an expression that will relate those two forces. So we can say that F2 will be equal to K2 over K1, multiply that by F1. Now K2 is 15, the other one is 10. So this means that F2 will be 15 over 10, multiply that by F1. So we have a nice and easy expression. F2 is just 1.5 times, multiply that by F1. Problems with moments typically are solved in two parts. We need to look at the total upwards and downwards forces and then also use the principle of moments. So let's consider the fact that the total force going upwards has to equal the total force downwards. In other words, essentially applying Newton's second law. F1 plus F2 will have to be equal to the mass of this multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Well, we know that F2 is 1.5 times F1, so we can go F1 plus 1.5, F1 is equal to mg. This means that 2.5 F1 is equal to mg. Now we have to be careful though because the total mass going downwards is going to be given by the mass of this added five kilogram mass plus the mass of the beam. So we're gonna have 2.5 multiplied by F1 will be given by six kilograms multiplied by G. In other words, F1 will be equal to six times 9.81 divided by 2.5. And this here will give me around 23.5 newtons. So now that we have F1, we can figure out what F2 is because this here is just equal to 1.5 multiplied by that number, 23.5. And this here is going to give me around 35.25 newtons. And now we can take a moment to apply the principle of moments. <laughs> it's typically easier to pick one of the supports to take moments. For instance, I'm just going to take moments around support number one. Okay, 
So with respect to spring number one, we're going to have the five kilogram mass at a distance D. So it's gonna be 5.0, multiply that by 9.81, multiply that by D. Then we're also going to have the one kilogram uh, times 9.81, which is just 9.81, acting at a distance of half of the length, which is 0 0.5. And this here will be equal to this force, 35.25, multiplied by the distance, which is from here to here, which is just one. Okay, let's rearrange for D. So for to rearrange for D, Grand total of 0.6186, let's call it 0.62 meters. So multi-step calculations require a lot of practice to get right and one video is definitely not enough and this is precisely why you should have a look at this video right over here to have a look at a really difficult problem.